a night where the magic number was one. One Ranger goal, one stunning third period performance by Tampa, and now the Rangers will need one more rally from to, from a game down in a series in order to avoid an excruciating end to the series. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valaket. 3-1 the final lightning over the Rangers and it really is amazing what transpired because the Rangers were this close a couple times to taking a late lead and yet when it seemed, Hank, like it was going to overtime, not so fast. Yeah, and we talked about it. It happened a few times throughout this year against these two teams down to the last two minutes where you feel like this game is going to overtime. It was a game where it felt like both teams understood the importance of it, and it looked like they didn't want to lose more than they wanted to win. That, that, that Watching this game, you didn't yeah. see a ton of big scoring chances. I think the focus was more on not making mistakes than try to create big chances. So a little mm. shocking yeah. when, when, it, when it ends like that in the end because it really felt like a pretty fair result, 1-1 going to overtime and, and kind of go from there. But again, Tampa, they have experience here. Yeah. They, I, I think they've been here now many times over the last couple of years. I think they feel pretty comfortable being in a tight game like that. Um, What's your thought? Well, I think the common denominator is that the games that are typically low event don't favor the Rangers. That's what we've seen in the playoffs, guys. It goes the other way on them. And it's a bizarre game to really break down, I thought, because it wasn't physical, but it wasn't a pillow fight. There weren't a lot of scoring chances, but it wasn't defensive. I mean, that was a really difficult game to get a handle on. Yeah. I think for the viewer, for the fans, for us, and now you leave and you just feel empty and miserable, right? <laughs> yeah. Because you feel like something just got stolen from you. And there were a few good looks, especially in the first period, that just didn't get to the net. So there was really a lost opportunity in the first. The Rangers had the better opportunities that didn't get to the net, whereas I thought Tampa was pretty abysmal in the first. So they almost get a win that way. Right. Tampa gets a win in the first because it ends 0-0. But with the way we talked about what this night was going to be, eight straight wins at home for the Rangers, the Rangers knowing the importance of needing to win the game, it's probably the perfect way for Tampa to play this game where, like you said, it just was sort of a nothing burger game for a lot of it, and it took the fans out of the game and maybe neutralized what Tampa wanted to do. It was still 1-1 inside the final two minutes, a minute 50 left in regulation time. And Mikhail Sergachev, who had the only goal up to that point, right. puts a wrist shot at goal. Maybe it hits Palat, maybe it doesn't, but it eludes Shesterkin, and that's the winner. That's the stranger part about this game, was the goals came from the perimeter from both teams. Three goals scored in the game from Lindgren and Sergachev, guys that aren't typically scoring. And they're through mazes, seeing eye pucks that just find a way. And maybe it's the first blocker that's got to be bigger here, and it gets through you. Both of Sergachev's goals got through the first blocker. And then at net, it was a maze of four players. And I think you're just, again, left scratching your head, saying, uh, what else could we have done? Two seeing eye pucks that were really drifters, mm -hmm. not bombs, from the point get through. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure out when you watch this game, too, to your point that... You have two teams that probably have a lot of respect for the opponent's power play. And when, you, when that comes into play, you don't really want to play on the edge. I was expecting more physicality in this game, coming home and play with more uh, drive. But in a game like this where there's so much at stake and also knowing what type of power play that you're facing on the other side, it, sometimes that brings you back a little bit. You start playing a little safe. So I think that's what we saw from both yeah, teams. It's a good point. Honest. I also thought in the third period the referees just swallowed the whistles too. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were a number of calls that could have been called, but I don't think they wanted to play that game. I don't think the refs wanted to get in there and, and make an impact in the game that way. Yeah. And to your point, I think that that's also what was happening there. Players were a little bit tentative. Nobody wanted to give away that big advantage on the power play because both teams mm -hmm. have been outstanding on Especially the power play. Especially when it's that type of game. Yeah. There's not a ton of big chances. It's almost like you're waiting for that opportunity to get your big boys out on the power play and 
kill the game for you. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. And yet in the last 10 minutes of the third period with the game tied at one, there were two opportunities for the Rangers that they will probably rue not converting right. and probably none more than Ryan Strome because both Fox and Lindgren also had pretty glorious chances. Yeah, for sure. Uh, interesting enough, but Fox and Lindgren are down low below the dots and that's been a big part of the Rangers game in the playoffs because of the play of Shesterkin. You can get down there and have 2D. This is Fox here where he gets robbed by the octopus of Vasilevsky and this play here from Cop. I mean this is a wide open pass uh, and it's a wide open net that's fanned on and this is one that you're gonna lose sleep over if you're Ryan Strom. That one yeah. really that's the dagger. I mean that's one of the but we also saw many plays like that in the first period that weren't converted on as well. I mean, it, when you get in front like that, it's so important to set your feet correctly so you can actually uh, maneuver if the pass is not on the tape. It's yeah. so important. And, and if you're a true goal scorer, I think that what they're really good at is setting their feet in front of the net so they can adjust their angle for, for, for the puck. Uh, and, I mean, that's the game right there. Yeah. It's just a, it was a little too high, and he was still drifting towards the net instead of setting his feet so he could correct the stick positioning for that puck. Yeah, Ryan Strom had a career high in goals during the regular season. This was his 18th playoff game, and he's still stuck on two goals, and that one will bite him. Uh, it was one nothing Rangers until Sergachev, the aforementioned, yeah. tied it for Tampa on a goal late in the second period, uh, similar to the one that for now is credited to him as the game winner. And this is a guy who had gone 40 games, 40 playoff games without a goal, and somehow he contributes to both. Do I have any answers for that? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, yeah. it's I don't know. That's that. That's, that's what, what happens that in the game playoffs. Was. Yeah. yeah, it but was such a bizarre game. Time, he, he's too good of a player to not have more goals than that. Right. I think he's a very skilled defenseman. It was more a matter of time before he was part of the the scoring sheet. So, uh, but in a game like this, it's typical goals. Yeah, you know, it's through screens, a puck with ice that just finds a way to to get in there and and. Um, you know, what well, you can say in front of the net there for, for the Dima Miller, um, it's important to try to front that shot instead of getting behind the Tampa guy. But I do think it hit, it looks like, I've seen the goal now a couple of times, it looks like it hit, hit the guy in front of you the net. You know what, one thing that I think that was also built in this game from Tampa was that they also, they shot a lot of pucks wide on purpose from the point. They put them into the trapezoid behind Shesterkin and you know, you're a little bit late there to get the block, but this is what teams are doing in the NHL. It's just a drifter from the point that they want to get through, and they're really hoping for a deflection. Perry, of course, does a great job at the top of the crease there to screen Shesterkin. But you're right, if the play that we would talk about, at least in our day, was that if it's a wrist shot or what the players call a sifter coming in like that, you really want your defenseman to get in front of it, take it in their body, get it to the ice, get it clear. And if it's a slap shot, you want to get under sticks because right. those aren't ones that you want to have your defenseman sacrifice their unprotected midsection. But, but it is hard for a demon to get pucks through. A lot of times you hear, you're in the building, you hear, fast, shoot, shoot. <laughs> but what you have to understand, it's hard to get pucks through. Demon's always trying to get that puck through, but you have the forward up top, then you have at least two guys in front of the net. So to find that little room to get the puck through, it, it, it's very hard. Yeah. Sometimes you you almost have to rely on a little luck to get yeah. it through. And unfortunately for the Rangers, you find some, some ways here a couple of times. Yeah, so now when you're Igor Shesterkin and you get to the end of the game like that and you realize two goals were scored uh, through traffic by a defenseman who has eight goals now in 85 career games, a guy you wouldn't expect to score, how do you process that, Hank, and how do you try to get past it in two days? No, I, I think he played a very good game. and You can't really do anything about those goals. I mean, the positioning was good. It's more, you know, could he have been a little bit more active to try to find that shot through the screen? Maybe, maybe not. But I think he knows that he did uh, everything he was supposed to do in this game. It was just not enough. As a, as a group, you're hoping for more than one goal on home ice. Yeah. Uh, but it's very important that you analyze it the right way, especially in the playoffs. You, you don't have a carryover. And, and for him, he, I'm 100% comfortable or confident that he will be on top of his game next one because he, he did everything he yeah. should.